In this episode, I'll give you a high-level overview of the OBS interface. We'll take a look at scenes, how to switch in between them. We're going to talk about the concept of scenes and how to put sources into them. Here's what the OBS interface looks like when you open it for the first time. There's this big black space in the center here. That is where your program content is going to appear. This little field at the bottom here called scenes, that is where you're going to have different types of scenes and you'll be able to switch between them literally just by clicking on them. This is going to make more sense as we create our own scenes. On the right hand side next to scenes you have your sources and that is where each scene will have certain types of layers or input sources and those are going to make up your scene. So if you imagine you had maybe a background and on top of that you had a video running that is slightly smaller than the background then those would be two sources in one scene. Again it will make more sense as soon as we start putting something in here. Then next to that we have the audio mixer window. That's where several audio levels are going to appear and you can have a look at your voice and your playback levels and all that and you can adjust the loudness of those in here. Next to that we have scene transitions. We can pick between cut and fade and the duration of either of them and that'll determine when you switch between scenes how that switch is going to look like. Say you had two cameras and you could cut between them or you could fade between them. That'll be determined here. And then lastly we have some controls here on the right hand side and they'll let you either start your stream or stop your stream when you're already streaming, or start a recording or stop a recording when you're already recording. You can also switch into studio mode. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And then you have settings down here. And that'll bring up this dialog in which we spend quite a bit of time when we get the setup ready. So don't be intimidated by all these options. There's only a few that you really need and you do not need to understand all of these. I just wanted to mention that's what happens. I'm gonna go cancel right out of here and calm my nerves. The final button here is exit and that'll just close OBS down. Let's do that right now just to demonstrate that that's actually going to do that. One thing about OBS I wanted to bring to your attention is that it should be started in administrator mode. The developers recommend that they're working on a fix there but just so that there's no funny business make sure you have this program start in administrator mode. Just in case you don't know how to do that let me go cancel out of here. It happens on the shortcut in fact you can head over here and browse to the file location. In that shortcut, you can head over to properties. And under compatibility, you can set this program to always run as an administrator. You may know other ways of doing it. For example, you can just go and right click on it and say run as administrator. Then it'll do it for that session. But if you set it under properties, compatibility, run this program as administrator then it'll always happen as soon as you start the program and you know you don't forget. Two more things I want to bring to your attention is these two things here profile and scene collection. Now those are interesting things because you can have multiple types of setups for OBS. So I for example use it for screen recording sometimes but then I also use it for 3D streams from my desktop or I also use it for game streams. Now, that's kind of interesting to have various types of collections of scenes here. So all the scenes you set up here could be set up differently for another project. And that is what a scene collection is all about. I have several and you can easily switch between them just by clicking on them. So this is my 3D shenanigans setup. And as we do that, you'll see that there's a lot of scenes popping up here. And here are the sources for those scenes. But then if I head over to my console streaming, then this collection down here will change into something completely different. And that's what scene collections are all about. You can create them simply by going new collection or you can duplicate an existing collection. You can also rename them and remove them. You can even import and export them from a different installation of OBS if you have one on a different system. That's how that works. I'm going to go back to this one which is empty and that's going to look like the one that you probably have with nothing in it because we're just getting started. Likewise, everything that is set up under settings, so all the parameters that we can set under settings, they can be grouped together into individual kind of sessions or collections with the profile. 
So a profile is a collection of settings, much like a scene collection is a collection of scenes down here. A profile is a collection of settings. So I set that up because sometimes I stream to this service, sometimes I stream to that service, sometimes I'm streamed to uh, nowhere in particular, and I'm recording it at a very high bit rate. And you know, this is how you can set that up. So anything you set under settings can be grouped together under a profile. And much in the same way, you can create new profiles, you can duplicate existing profiles to amend them differently differently, you can rename them or remove them or import them and export them to and from other systems that you have access to. That's what all those things are about. Now this sounds intimidating because we're only getting started, but it makes more sense if I show you actually how to set up a scene. So the first one is given to you kind of for free and it's just called scene. Let's leave it that way and add a source to that scene so that I can show you what happens here. Let me go and click the plus button here. That'll bring up a long list of available video sources that we can use. Don't worry too much about all of them. I'll just show you a couple here. One is an image source. And if you click that, you can create a brand new image. You can leave the default as image, or you can give it a meaningful title, such as background or whatnot. I'll just leave it at the default and click OK. This will bring up a file browser down here, and that lets you navigate to any of your images on your computer. I've got a handy folder here on my desktop, and I'll go and click this one here, JD1. That's just a static background image. This is what it looks like. We have the option to unload the image when we're not showing that. I don't recommend ticking that because although it's more memory friendly, it also means it'll take OBS a second or two to actually dig that image out and display it. So you may end up with a second or two of black before the image is shown. So leave that unticked, click OK, and we'll see that this image is now displayed as our source image. That's a good start. Let's rename our scene here just by right clicking on it and saying rename, and I'm gonna call this one, just for laughs, static image, so that we know what that scene is all about. Let me go create another one, just by hitting that plus sign here. So this is a scene, those are the sources for the scene. Let me go create another one and call this one, I'll call that moving scene. So we have a static one and a moving one. Each scene starts out with no sources in it. That's kind of exactly what we want. To get something in there, let's click that plus icon again. This time, however, I'm not gonna select a static image. I'm gonna select a media source, and that can be something like a video, for example. Let's go bring that in. I'll leave it at media source, click OK. And now, again, I'm gonna get a file browser here, but I'll get a few more options here. Those make sense for videos, really, like looping and restarting playback when the source becomes available again. Let me go browse into my folder here again. I'm going to go grab this one. This is a loop file that I've made up of just a moving background. And as soon as I click OK, it'll show in my source. Now I have two scenes between which I can change. So just by clicking on the first one, I'll get that really soft and nice transition to my static image. And now I can click on the moving scene and now I get the moving image here. Notice that my video file could potentially have audio on it as well. This one doesn't, but if it does, then this is where you could control the levels in the audio mixer. Make it quieter, make it louder. You can even mute it just by clicking on the little loudspeaker icon here. Notice that at the end of my video, the picture goes black. That might not be what I want if this is kind of an endless loop that I've got going here. So I like to enable the loop option for a moving video here. In order to do that on something that you've already added, just right click and hit properties. You can also double click this source and then that same window will open. What we need to do here is hit loop and then my video will loop. This option here, restart playback when source becomes active, means that should I ever change from another scene to this scene, the video starts playing back from the beginning. If you don't want that to happen, you can untick that and then the video will keep playing on a loop in the background no matter if you switch to the scene or not. You can also use hardware decoding when available. That may be faster on some systems, depends on it. And we also have close file when inactive, which means the, the scene will be unloaded. And much like with the image, if you were to click that, that will be more memory friendly, but it also means that should you ever switch to the scene again, you may end up with a second or two of black. So careful with that. 
Also note this option here, show nothing when playback ends. I would probably untick that. This means that if loop isn't available and the video comes to an end, it won't show black. It'll just show the last frame of that moving video source, just so that you've heard of it. I'll click OK. And now this video is going to loop forever. And once again, I can switch between these scenes here. That's the basic principle behind OBS. Now, the scenes fade when I switch between them because we've got the fade transition enabled and we have a duration of 30 milliseconds. I could make that longer, so I could make that 3000 milliseconds, which means it'll take three seconds for the whole scene to switch from one to another. Kind of depends on the situation that you're in. 300, the default works quite nicely, but you can change that into whatever fits your needs. The other thing you can do here is switch to the cut transition and that as you would imagine doesn't have a duration down here and if you switch between one scene and another that's just going to be a straight cut without a fade. I'm going to put this back to fade because I really like the fade and I'll show you one last thing before we wrap this episode up and that is studio mode. So right now if I were not in studio mode which is when this button is not lit up light gray then I can click a scene and I'll go there immediately. That may not be what you want. If you have a lot of scenes, you may want to preview a scene before you put it live. This is how professional television studios work. They always have a preview monitor and a program monitor next to one another. And the preview monitor shows you what would come up next should you hit the transition button. And that's exactly what studio mode is. If you enable that, you get two monitors here and you get the transition button and some options in the middle here. So watch what happens if I now select my static image here. My program monitor on the right doesn't actually change. And that's good because I may want to have a look which scene is it that I want to go to and then preview that in the scene collection. And once I've chosen it, like my static image, I can then click transition and then my transition will actually happen. Also notice that what used to be in my program monitor has now transitioned to my preview monitor. So I can now go and transition back and forth between these two sources. Or I could select another one in my scene collection and then put that live if I wanted to. That about wraps it up for episode one. Join me in the next one where we're going to talk more about other sources and how to add layers and other overlays to your scenes.